The biosphere. The biosphere refers to all living organisms on Earth and is often called a global ecosystem. The atmosphere is the layer of gases that surrounds the Earth. The gases in the atmosphere allow organisms to respire and regulate the temperature of the planet. The atmosphere's ability to absorb the ultraviolet rays of the sun is what allows life on Earth to survive. It is a mixture of two main gases, nitrogen and oxygen, with several other gases in, in much, much lower quantities. Carbon dioxide is found as less than 0.03% and yet it plays a vital role in life on our planet. In the greenhouse effect, the light that travels from the sun can undergo a few things. The first one is light gets reflected back into the outer atmosphere. This is usually your shortwave light or your ultraviolet light. Some of it gets absorbed by the surface, heating the surface, and some of it gets reflected back into the atmosphere. This is usually your long wave light or your infrared light. Biological sequestration involves the removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by plants and microorganisms and its storage in vegetative biomass and in soils. During photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is taken up by plants and is converted into energy-rich organic molecules such as glucose, which contains carbon. Animals eat these plants for food, taking up the organic carbon in the form of carbohydrates. They then break them down into organic molecules during the process of cellular respiration and the release of energy, water and carbon dioxide takes place. The carbon dioxide levels are gradually increasing, causing concern amongst many scientists. Before the 1800s, the levels were 280 parts per million. By 1960, it increased to 360 parts per million. And as of 2013, it passed the long feared 400 parts per million levels, a, cri a long feared critical threshold. Next, let's take a look at the lithosphere. The lithosphere is the crust and the upper part of the mantle of the Earth. All of the most interesting geology takes place in just this thin little layer that covers the surface of the Earth. It's so thin, if we were to compare it to an apple, it's just the skin. It's divided into the oceanic and the continental lithospheres and it depends on the decaying matter of the biosphere for its complete and total renewal. For example, molten magma rock from under the surface first has to be spewed out as lava onto the surface containing a rich variety of minerals. This lava from the volcano then first has to cool down and solidify as rocks. And then after it has rained on the rocks for a very long time, time the minerals will start building up on the ocean floor. The geosphere then contributes to soil and minerals. It stores water both above ground and underground and in open areas. It provides us with food and medication and areas for human development. Important cycles is the phosphorus cycle. Deposits which contains phosphate in quantities and concentrations that are economic to mine as ore is actually quite rare. The two main sources for phosphate is either guano or, which is formed from bird droppings, or rocks containing concentrations of calcium phosphate in the form of apatite. Now the phosphorus cycle is extremely slow and various conditions is necessary for the process where the phosphorus can be washed into certain areas. But phosphate is one of the most important chemicals in our energy carrying systems, which means that all plants and all animals need phosphate. This is why farmers often have to use fertilizers to enrich their soil with phosphate, nitrogen and potassium. You can all either use artificial fertilizers or organic fertilizers. Organic fertilizers are usually the ones that is richest in their phosphate content. For example, animal manure, specifically pig manure, 
has a very high phosphate content and can This is why they call it strip mining. The drag lines go back and forth in a strip. And they, the drag line reaches down there and he digs off the surficial aquifer about 20, 30 feet. Then he gets into that gray stuff there. You see he's dumping it into a pit. And there's normally there's water jets spraying where his bucket is. And it turns it into a big muddy mess where that white truck is. And there's a pipe there. You see those pipes going off? Uh, this gray stuff is the matrix that they're mining. So they dig up that gray stuff, put it into a little muddy pool over there, and then pump it over to a plant where they separate out the phosphate. You can see that nice brown topsoil. He's digging that off, and he's piling it into those rows there. And then when he gets down to that gray layer, you can see that kind of gray, blue, green, 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 gray color. That's the matrix. That's about one third clay, one third sand, and one third phosphate rock. And he's going to dig down through that gray matrix until he hits kind of a cream colored layer. And then he'll stop. Nitrogen makes up most of the gas in the atmosphere, about 78%. Nitrogen is important to living organisms and is used in the production of amino acids, proteins and nucleic acids. But the nitrogen gas present in air is not available to organisms. It first has to be turned into an absorbable form. For this, root nodule bacteria plays an important role by fixing the nitrogen that is in the atmosphere into a form that the plants can absorb. This is where nitrogen fixation takes place. Nitrogen fixing soil bacteria turns nitrogen into ammonia. Nitrosomonas takes the ammonia and turns it into nitrites and nitrobacter turns it into a nitrate that can be absorbed. Of course, during decomposition, bacteria and fungi can break down proteins and amino acids from plants and animals. So the denitrification process is a process where bacteria converts the ammonia and nitrate back into nitrogen and nitrous oxide. The nitrogen is then returned to the atmosphere to start the cycle all over again. So nitrification is when nitrogen gets turned into nitrates through a variety of steps and denitrification is where the final product is atmospheric nitrogen and nitrous oxide. Let's now take a look at the hydrosphere. A planet's water or hydrosphere can be liquid or vapor or a solid in the form of ice. On Earth, liquid water exists on the surface, which is quite unique. It exists in the forms of oceans, lakes and rivers. Water changes from a liquid to a vapor through the energy of the sun. In the water vapor forms clouds in the sky. Water droplets or ice crystals gather and then fall from the sky as rain, hail or snow. Finally, the water runs over the land towards water bodies such as rivers. So the biosphere is where life can be found on Earth, and it is made up of the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and the lithosphere. If you liked what I said, please like and share and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that little bell so you can get the notifications of other cool videos such as this one here and this one here. Please subscribe.